Hello. We're talking about what science can tell us about the pros and cons of using trekking poles on a hike or climb. Hello everyone, I'm Jason. In September of 2020, an article was published in the journal Wilderness and Environmental Medicine by Ashley L. Hawk and Randall L. Jensen. It was a review article looking at findings from many different studies asking a myriad of questions trying to answer, to cite the article's title, are trekking poles helping or hindering your hiking experience? Of course, the findings are mixed, so it may be easy to say it comes down to personal preference. But preferences for what? Because the truth is that the findings are pretty clear that trekking poles help some things and make other things more difficult. So would your preferences change if you had more complete information? Let's find out. First, it's pretty clear that using trekking poles increases energy expenditure. You're now incorporating more of your upper body into each stride. And like the fact that having weight at the end of your feet has a five-fold increase in energy use compared to having the same weight on your back because you have weight way out at the end of your limbs, far away from your core, you're doing the same thing with trekking poles. But this has not been studied over varied terrain. Could trekking poles actually save you from expending energy if you were balancing better and avoided falls and the energy expenditure of getting back up several times? Maybe. We don't know. And trekking poles also, and likely for the same reason, demand more of your cardiovascular system, showing increased oxygen usage and increased heart rate. That could be a good thing for those who are wanting to maximize their workout, but maybe a bad thing for those who are trying to maximize their summit or destination potential. But while trekking poles require more energy usage, they decrease the amount of perceived exertion. That is to say that people who use trekking poles are likely to think of an ascending hike as feeling easier when compared to those who don't use trekking poles. Scientists hypothesize that by spreading the work out across your body, you may not feel any one muscle group getting taxed so heavily. Does this matter? Well, if the perceived effort is high enough to turn you around on your hike or your climb, then maybe it matters a lot. Similarly, the use of trekking poles on descent has been linked to reductions in delayed onset muscle soreness. In other words, you are more likely to feel less soreness in your legs after descending a mountain, meaning you can try another mountain more easily sooner. And this seems to be borne out by more than just perception. Ground impact forces can be reduced by up to 12%, and joint loading forces in your legs can be reduced by as much as 18%. Related to this is that people using trekking poles have been shown to walk with longer strides, thus fewer steps and therefore fewer impacts, and they move faster over terrain. However, part of the reason for the speed and the stride length is a promoted forward lean, which is good for walking at a good gait, but bad for carrying your pack with the right load through the spine and onto the hips and pelvis. That is, until you get to really large loads, like expedition loads, in which case transferring some of the load onto the poles themselves, again, reduces the demands on your legs and core muscles. When it comes to balance, people generally accept that using poles improves balance in the short run. You can put them down for stream crossings over precarious rock and log bridges. And like a person walking a high wire with a large balance pole, putting weight out at the ends of your body helps you balance over your core. And of course, being able to weight a pole on a precarious step or a steep downhill section helps you break your momentum, leading to fewer falls. But there is a school of thought that prolonged use of poles can erode a person's natural balance. This has not yet been studied. Beyond the science, then, there are the logistics. Having poles can be burdensome if you're needing to transition from a hike to a technical pursuit like ice or rock climbing. You now have to store your poles in some way that will keep them out of your way, and you're now also adding that weight to your pack. And there's the issue of not having your hands free if you encounter sections of class three or class four climbing. So are trekking poles right for you? Well, I can tell you that for me, I have a bad right knee. It's seen 
three ACL reconstructions. So by reducing the joint load on my knee, I was able to go from 10 summit climbs one summer to 20 the next summer once I started using trekking poles. And I've dealt with at least some of the logistical downsides by using trekking poles that fold up like a tent pole rather than just telescope so that I can store the poles out of my way and in my pack close to my body, reducing the energy needed to carry them when they're not in use. But that means that I need to put up with the increased demands on my cardiovascular system and my energy output. So while it may be preference, it really is about preference around the right trade-offs for you based on your strengths and weaknesses and the types of outings that you participate in. Nice job, Jace. Ooh, welcome to the Hotel 16. <laughs> so does knowing the science behind the pros and cons of trekking poles change your perspective on using them? Let us know why or why you don't use trekking poles in the comments section. If you want additional thoughts related to this video and every video that we produce, along with links to the equipment we discuss, sample gear lists, sample itineraries, and links to other outdoor resources, please visit our website at shortguysbetaworks.com. The link's in the description below. And if you want to be alerted as we release new content, please subscribe and ring that bell. We produce educational content like this, as well as short films of our family adventures, and we release something new every week. So if you have ideas for content that you'd like to see, you can put those ideas in the comments section too. We'll see you next week and keep on getting more out of that big outside.